Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can do keyword research using a combination of text analysis, data visualization, and AI. The core of this approach is to focus on the informational demand or on what people are searching for when they search for a certain query. And then you can compare it with informational supply, so what exists out there on the market, and then find the gap within. So keep watching to learn how it works. First of all, just to explain what data we'll be extracting to get the informational demand. So when you search for something on Google, if you type it in, it shows you suggested search queries, right? So this is what people are searching for when they search for a specific term. In this case, I use the term of hyperfixation. I can see that people also search for ADHD, uh, autism, test, definition, meal, and so on, right? So what Infranodus does is that it extracts uh, 100 of those terms um, and more if you want and then it visualizes them as a graph. So here I'm just going to demonstrate to you how it works. I go into Infranodus app and then I go into keyword research, uh, re related keywords for a certain query and then I type in hyperfixation as a topic, choose language English, U the US market, I can also choose other markets. I choose that I want to use search phrases from related queries. By the way, you can also use AdWords suggestions. And then what it does is that it visualizes the graph of the uh, words that I use in combination with hyperfixation. These are the words on the left side here listed, 200 um, suggestions actually. And if they are used in the same context, they will be connected to each other. So for example, autism and food are often used in the same context, so they're connected to each other, right? Then you have another one like friendly diet, they're also connected to each other, so they will be connected. And if a certain word tends to connect many different subjects together, it's going to be bigger on the graph. So this is how you can interpret this graph. The words that are bigger are more influential in this discourse, and the words that have the same color belong to the same clusters. They're shown here. We have uh, several different clusters of words here. And so for example, one on the food and autism, another one on ADHD, another one on OCD, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, and some personal implications of that. So there you quickly get a visualization of the main clusters of topics that exist around this topic and also how they relate to one another, which is great for keyword research because you understand the demand directly. You see that people who search for hyperfixation, they also search for ADHD, they also search for autism and food, and you see that they actually search for autism and food in the same context often. And that there is also another cluster on um, OCD, and this is like different from ADHD because it's in a different cluster. So there you get a general understanding of the main topics and where you can use the AI, which can be really helpful, is when you want to interpret those clusters, right? So we have these clusters, you can either read which keywords they contain and identify uh, what they represent on your own, or you can click here and then what happens is that it sends it to GPT-4 and GPT-4 generates names for this cluster. So you get like uh, high level topics. We have food autism, ADHD, um, OCD and some interests of people. So that's actually interesting. Let's see what about interest. We can click here and see that, okay, uh, special interest is another term which is used in combination with hyperfixation. So if we like these ideas, we can make project notes and write that, okay, ADHD is going to be one of the keywords to use, autism, food, hyperfixation, obviously, and special interest and OCD. These are the main topics that people search for when they also search for uh, hyperfixation. And if we are to create content about it or research this topic further or, or explore it, it's a very useful way to understand what informational demand there is, like what people search for, what they need when they search for this topic, because you want to create content that could be interesting for people. Where we can achieve really interesting results, however, is when we start also looking at the gaps in the structure. And this is where AI can be really helpful. We see that people search for, let's say, uh, ADHD and OCD, but they don't search for it in the same context. So what happens if we connect those two topics together? We can use the built-in AI and select those topics. So I select this one and that one. And then I can ask the AI to generate a research question that would link those two topics together. And usually that can lead to really interesting ideas. It's what people thought thought about in different contexts but not linking that together. So this usually can be used to also generate some interesting connections in the informational demand which can sometimes lead to really interesting ideas.
So for example, here it's asking about the similarities and symptom expression between uh, ADHD and OCD. Uh, and how do these symptoms compare to the traditional diagnostic rules? Okay, so this is how you would use the informational demand. Uh, the next step that you can do when you do keyword research is to understand what the informational supply is. So if at this point we were studying what people search for when they search for something, now we can also try to understand what they actually find. So the best way to do that is just to use the built-in Google search app and to do the same search on hyperfixation. And then you click this and then you see the results that are out there. And as you can see directly, the results are much more focused on the idea of focus, intense, interest, ADHD is also present, not too much. If you click on the results, you will see in which context it's used. And here I can also uh, click the link and open the page which is talking about the subjects. So there you can also navigate to the relevant Google search results. And as you can see here, I represent the informational demand, uh, supply, sorry, in relation to the informational demand. So now a good question to ask is how does the informational supply, so what's available out there, com compares to the informational demand. One way to do that is to just open uh, the previous graph in a new tab and to compare visually. So I see here is much more focused on focus and activity while, while people are actually looking more for autism and food. Here, autism is present. Let's make a search and see if autism is really present. Yes, it is somewhere, but it's not such a big node. You see, it's like not so influential here. So this already tells us that while people are searching for it, they don't actually find it in that context. So if we create content on the topic of uh, hyperfixation, maybe writing more on autism could really help. What we can also do is to make this comparison automatically. So we will use this graph compare feature. If you don't see it, you can click on advanced mode and click here. And then you say like, okay, I want to see how this graph differs from the keywords graph. So how supply differs from demand. Then I click visualize and it shows me what exists in the keywords, but not in the Google uh, search results. And there's not so much, but there are some stuff that I see here. I have to hover over them and I see that uh, eating is a subject which is present in search queries, but not so much present in results. So then it means that if I'm creating content on hyperfixation, probably food would be a topic that I want to explore further because there is more demand about it than there is the supply. And then if I click reverse here, then I can reverse this comparison and uh, show what exists in Google search results that doesn't really exist in the information demand. So what people find, but they don't actually search for. And we see that, okay, focus, interest, this is what you see a lot in results, but they don't actually search for it. So you would rather want to skip this information. So this is how you would do. Uh, make one graph of informational demand here where you can see what terms people use to search for something, then another graph of, inf of informational supply, then you compare them and see uh, you know, what are the gaps and what's missing. And of course, for informational supply, you can also use the built-in app that visualizes uh, uh, YouTube search results as well. You can also use uh, Amazon products if you want, so you have several capabilities here. Try it out on infranodus.com and let me know how it works. Also subscribe to this channel so you can get informed about the new videos when they come out and click the bell button so you get notified. And if you have any questions about this workflow, please feel free to contact me through the support portal. I will leave the link to it in the description to the video below. Thank you.